All right, how's everybody doing today? My name is Kyle. I'm the CEO at A Team, and you guys are all attending the How to Manage OKRs at Scale webinar. So I hope everybody's in the right place right now. Uh, you know, if not, you might be a little bit confused by some of the jargon, some of the terminology that we're using. But we're going to be talking about how to manage objectives and key results at scale in practice in in your businesses. And one thing to point out about this webinar is that it's, it's a very practical webinar. Uh, being the CEO of a tech company, hopefully it's no surprise that uh, I think software is a, a great way to do a lot of things at scale. And uh, here at A-Team, we, we build an OKR goals management platform. And we think it's a great way in mid-sized businesses to manage the OKR rollout process and to manage them across large dispersed teams. So. Um, this, this webinar in particular is going to focus on the practical implementation of OKRs using software like A-Team. Uh, and a couple of points of procedure before we even dive into this is uh, there's going to be time at the end for questions. So I'll definitely leave time if you guys have any questions, but feel free to stop me along the way. Obviously, the way that GoToWebinar works is it's uh, sometimes difficult for me to see when a question pops up. But if I see one, I'll, I'll try to answer it in a timely fashion. The other thing is if you guys need to jump off early or you want these slides afterwards, we will be providing them. And we'll also be providing a copy of the webinar itself if you want to share that with anybody. Uh, and I'll, I'll have a slide at the end about that, but you could just message hello at ateam.com to get any more information about this webinar or about a product or about OKRs in general. So uh, what are we going to cover today? Um, the agenda is, is obviously we're talking about how software unlocks the OKR superpowers at scale. So we'll go over what those OKR superpowers are and how software helps to, to enable those and make them more effective. And, and then we're going to go step by step looking at the planning process of how you launch OKR, uh, how you launch an OKR implementation effectively. We're going to go over collaboration. How do you do this at scale? So how do you roll it out to a lot of employees, to different teams, maybe even geographically dispersed teams? How do you track it and create that culture of accountability, making sure that people are actually engaged with the OKR process and making sure that they're checking in and providing timely, accurate up updates on their OKRs? And we'll go into a few more things too that are both from the software perspective and just from the practical implementation perspective. So again, this, this webinar is definitely not an OKR 101 theory webinar. This assumes that you guys have at least some baseline knowledge of what OKRs are. And it, it takes a step further by, we're actually going to jump between these, the slideshow presentation that you're seeing now, and then I'll jump from time to time into the A-Team application itself to show you guys some, some screens and to demonstrate some of the workflows that I'm talking about here. Um, and uh, the, the superpowers that I mentioned here are coming from the book Measure What Matters by John Doerr. It came out, I think it was the end of last April, April 20, 2018. And uh, that's how a lot of people are getting exposed to OKRs now. Obviously, OKRs are a methodology that goes all the way back to Intel days, I think, in like the 90s and the 80s. Um, and so we'll talk briefly about the history. But a, a lot of these superpowers and a lot of the understanding of OKRs right now is driven by the book Measure What Matters. Matters by John Doerr, which just came out last year. So before we go too much further, I would like to do a poll with everybody. It looks like the slide's a little messed up on the screen, but I'm going to launch a poll and go to webinar and just get a feel for what everybody's experience level is right now in their companies with OKR. So you all should be seeing a poll in go to webinar right now and feel free to respond to that. And I'll give you guys maybe 30 seconds to a minute to get, looks like we have 57 attendees right now. So a good crowd. And I just want to get a, a feel for everybody's experience level with OKRs. And again, uh, the assumption here is I, I hope that nobody's in that last bucket there where they've never heard of OKRs because again, and this is going to be a very, very confusing webinar if that's the case. Um, and I'd say that the, the sweet spot for using OKR, dedicated OKR software, a platform like A-Team, is really when you're, when you're kind of in the middle there. Um, obviously, if you already have a lot of experience using OKRs effectively for multiple quarters, I would guess that either you've already found OKR software or you're just having great success using something like spreadsheets or maybe just managing it in like internal Word documents or Google Docs or something like that. 
Uh, and obviously software, I think, can help. I think it, it, as we'll go through, it has a lot of great advantages over Excel spreadsheets or docs. But uh, I'm guessing that and, and looking at these poll results here, I'll, I'll close it right now and share the results with you guys. It looks like um, it looks like most, most people fall into that middle bucket. Little experience, you're just starting out. Maybe you're in the learning or exploration phase, or you have just a, a little bit of experience, but you're trying to be more effective with them. So that's perfect. This is a great crowd for this webinar because that's those those middle three uh, sections there of the poll are where software can be really, really effective and can help take your OKR, OKR program to the next level in terms of getting engagement across your organization, um, tracking, improving over time, things like that. So good to see that a lot of people are, are falling into those middle buckets there. All right, so how does software help to unlock the OKR superpowers at scale? First of all, what are those superpowers? So for those of you who have read Measure What Matters, uh, th these should be relatively familiar. Uh, there's a little acronym there, FAST or, or FATS, whichever one you prefer, but it's, it's the superpowers are, they help you focus and commit to priorities. OKRs help you align and connect for teamwork, track for accountability, and stretch for amazing. And that last one, stretch for amazing, really speaks to the, the moonshot ideal that companies like Google are famous for. Uh, and, and that's why Google thinks OKRs were a, a, a really powerful driving force making them successful in the early days because of that stretch for amazing aspect, that superpower. Um, if you guys haven't read Measure What Matters, I would definitely recommend you pick up the book. It's a, it's a great read. It's got a lot of practical advice and it has a lot of case studies from companies, not only tech companies like Google and Intel, but also from nonprofits like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, some other um, nonprofit work that like Bono does. Uh, so it's got a lot of great practical advice and case studies that it makes it a really great read. Um, and so these superpowers, I'll just go ahead and say up front, software is really powerful for the first three. It really helps accomplish and unlock the first three. That fourth one, Stretch for Amazing, that's much more of a cultural shift. And I think that software can help provide a little kick and a little bit of extra uh, maybe transparency around which OKRs are business as usual versus which are these Stretch for Amazing moonshots. So it can help with that fourth one, but that one's much more of a cultural thing that's going to be specific to your guys' individual companies. Uh, and so if you want any more information on anything I'm talking about here, I'll also mention that uh, A-Team is not the only OKR platform. There's a lot of great tools out there. There's pros and cons of each one. We all do different things and we all specialize in different things. If you'd like to compare the different OKR platforms, uh, we have a website there, okrsoftware.com slash compare. There's a couple more websites like that. And of course, if you want a, a book summary of Measure What Matters to just get more information on where this talk is coming from, then you can check out the summary on our website there or email us at hello at 18 for more information. So the first, the first thing, the first way that to unlock OKR superpowers at scale with software is through planning and alignment. So basically, <clears throat> how do you, uh, I, basically the way you're, you're going to start the program is you need to, you need to obviously plan your OKRs, align them. And the first question that most people ask me is, well, do you do top down or do you do bottom up alignment? So this is a, uh, it, honestly, I think this is almost across the board. Every time I talk to a customer who's rolling out OKRs for the first time, there's this big question around how much of the OKR, uh, how much of the OKR should be dictated from the executive level, from the leadership on down through the bottom of the organization? How much should we allow the individual teams to actually set their own objectives? And the answer is it's really a bit of both. Uh, it, it's gonna start with the top-down approach, at least in the sense that you wanna start with your overall business strategy. And OKRs need to be driven by what your business is trying to accomplish. So uh, you're probably going to have some sort of maybe one-page strategy in your organization, a mission statement, a vision statement, something like that. In this case, we're showing some strategic pillars a lot of different businesses do strategy differently, but the important thing is that OKRs really need to tie back into your strategy. So as you're starting to roll out OKRs, the first thing you need to do is you need to plan and you need to align OKRs with your business strategy. And then you need to allow your teams and your individual managers and frontline employees 
to align their OKRs up into your top corporate OKRs. Seeing one question here. Uh, someone's asking if they can get a copy of the reporting after the webinar. Yep, that'll be available and I'll have more information, but you can email hello at 18.com if you'd like a copy. So, all right, again, so now we're talking about planning alignments, the first phase of how you launch OKR successfully within the organization. And right now I'm gonna jump into our first in-app demo to detail in A team exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna switch the PowerPoint presentation now over to my browser. And you guys should see a very similar screen to that slide because what we've done here, we're in a demo environment. So apologies if things are running a little slow or if we run into a, a few hiccups here and there. But this is an A team demo environment. And we're looking at our alignment chart, which shows you the hierarchy of OKRs in this demo organization. And the important thing here is that we've created these top corporate goals as an example of how you take your strategic pillars, how you take your strategy and your vision, and you convert them into your top corporate OKRs at the CEO level. So this is the start of that kind of top-down strategy where you're showing all of your employees exactly what your organization is trying to accomplish, be it in, in Q1 2019, as we're showing here, or it could be for the entire year. You know, generally, when you're rolling out an OKR process, most of the customers that we have at A Team, we recommend that they do it quarterly, and most of them are doing quarterly OKRs with maybe a few annual OKRs at the top corporate level. So again, we've taken strategic pillars, we've converted them into these, these four top corporate OKRs. And, and really the, the thing you should imagine here is imagine you're going into a quarterly business meeting with the executive leadership team and you've got your CEO and you've got, you've, you have all your department leads all in a room together thinking about, okay, how in Q1 2019 are we going to accomplish these objectives? What, what are the objectives of each department, each functional objective that's going to make it possible, for instance, to grow the business? And what's really great here in this alignment chart is as the executive leadership team is planning out this strategy for Q1 2019, they can visually align all of these objectives. So here you see a sales goal and a marketing goal and a product goal, and we see how all of these objectives align into this top corporate goal of growing the business. So as an example here, the sales team is committed to 30 million in sales, and the, the marketing team is going to help the sales team hit that target, and you know hopefully we have some contributions and key results that help define what that actually means. And that's, you know, that's the difference there between the objective level and the, the key result level. Uh, but again, this is a, a top corporate planning exercise, and it's a, a chance for the executive leadership team to all get on the same page about, uh, about what, what we're trying to accomplish here in Q1 2019. So that's the that's top-down portion of the alignment. And, and the other thing, too, is that what's really great about, about software is not only can we visualize this alignment, but we can, we can do some fancy things that you can't really do in a spreadsheet. Like we can do cross-functional alignment. So it doesn't just need to be a pure top to bottom hierarchy. You know, what if, what if our marketing, so I'm jumping here to a, a team objective for the marketing team. So Mary Martin, she's VP of marketing. She, she wants to support the sales team in their objective. She, you know, she has certain lead gen targets for Q1. And those of course are important for sales meeting their target that they committed to of hitting 30 million in sales in Q1. So how do we actually visualize that? Well, using software, you can go right in there and create some sort of alignment. So how does this objective contribute to another objective? Well, let's find that sales objective of 30 million in sales, and we could align it directly to that sales objective that we were seeing on the other page. So here in the alignment chart, if I drill down one more level, now not only do I see the top corporate goal, the way that sales aligns with that, and the way that each of these sales targets fits into this overall sales department goal. But I also see how marketing cross-functionally aligns with what sales is trying to accomplish. So that's that lead gen target goal that we just, that we just were showing on, on this other page. We've actually aligned it visually and algorithmically with what we're trying to accomplish on the sales team. And I mentioned that algorithmic term because one of the cool things that we do in A-Team is that the, the progress percentage you're seeing on this OKR for the sales team is actually derived by the progress of all these contributions. So if you took the average of all those, you'd get this, this sales team progress. And that's really cool at the top corporate level because that means that your CEO, your executives, 
don't need to micromanage and get reports from everybody in the organization every single week just to update the progress on the overall top corporate objective. That all gets calculated for you using the A-Team software. So it's a really powerful way to report, and we'll get into that a little bit later too. Um, so again, this is that top-down alignment where we're looking at the executive leadership team and how different departments can cross-functionally align, which is a really powerful, uh, powerful tool, both visually and algorithmically that you can accomplish using software. And I mentioned earlier, what about that bottom-up alignment? So the next step is now that you've set out this, this top corporate vision, um, sorry, I've got some questions here. Looks like we got some really good detailed questions here. I think that some of these I will save for a little bit later. Uh, it gets into it gets into the weeds about how the alignment works and like how the objective weighting works. I think that's uh, a little bit too detailed for for this portion of the presentation, but let's save that to the end and I'll I'll talk about some of the intricacies of the alignment software. Okay. Um, but again, so we looked at the top down how the executive leadership team is doing alignment and how they're setting that top corporate vision. What about the bottom up? Well, this is great. We can, as Paula Finley now, imagine that Paula, who is the online ads and SEO manager, she's talking with her manager, who is Mary Martin, VP of marketing. And they're discussing the way in which Paula's team responsible for SEO, how are they going to fit into what the company's trying to accomplish? How are we going to create alignment between the SEO manager's objectives and the overall top corporate objectives? And so... Paula, working with Mary, her manager, can define this, this objective of improving SEO, and she could define it in terms of these quantitative OKRs about you know in, improved conversion rates, number of organic search leads, things like that. And now she's got a great objective, but her objective doesn't exist all on its own. It, it's not something unrelated to what the company's trying to accomplish. She can then align this to what her manager, Mary, is trying to accomplish within the marketing department. And so we were looking at that meet lead gen target for Q1 goal that Mary, the VP of marketing owned. Now we could align bottom up from Paula into Mary's goal. And again, if we look at, again at this alignment chart, once again, we could, uh, we could see the visualization from top to bottom, how everything fits in. So grow the business at the top corporate level, this 30 million in sales number at the sales department level. We have this meet lead gen target goal that is cross-functionally aligned from marketing to sales. And then down here, we have this improved SEO goal that shows how Paula Finley as a frontline manager in the online ads and SEO department or online ads and SEO team, it, it shows her exactly how she connects all the way up through the organization into what we're trying to accomplish as a, as a, as a, as a company for Q1. So again, it's really, it's really great to not only visualize this, but have some of these nice little benefits like the algorithmic alignment where at the CEO level, he doesn't need to check in every week. Jack Smith, the CEO, doesn't need to be checking in every week on exactly how, oh, what, what's the conversion rate or like on our ads or what is the, uh, what, what is the current uh, lead targets for the month. He, his, the progress of his objective is completely determined by all the contributions into it. So it's a really powerful way for uh, to create both alignment and as we'll get into a little bit later, reporting up through the organization. So at this point, I'm gonna jump back in the slideshow real quick. Okay. So Again, this was, uh, we're looking at alignment because that's the first stage of how to launch OKR successfully. As I mentioned, it's you, got, you have to plan, you have to align. And the alignment is, is a little bit of, of top-down planning using the overall corporate strategy. And it's a little bit of the bottom up where you're giving your teams and managers and individual contributors some autonomy where you, you set the objectives at the top corporate level, at the department level, and they can work with their managers, with their teams to figure out exactly how what they're doing is going to connect into into the mission of the organization, into the into the objectives for Q1 for this organization. Now, the next step in terms of unlocking these OKR superpowers is, of course, after you've done all that planning alignment, but well, you have to take some sort of action, right? It, it doesn't just stop when you have this perfect hierarchy of goals. You actually have to execute against this plan. So planning and alignment, that's step one. 
that's something that's a little bit of uh, exercise with the top corporate executive team, the executive leadership, and a little bit of a team exercise of figuring out how those objectives fit in. But then, well, how are we going to connect our daily activities to that beautiful hierarchy of OKRs that we set? And here we got a little quote from, this is Andy Grove, probably maybe the father or grandfather of OKRs. He, he created them at Intel as, a, as the goal, goal setting methodology at Intel. And uh, you know, he says here that the key is to set and check in on goals frequently. And so it's not enough to just set the goals. You need to check in on them and you need a, an organizational habit and culture around OKRs and check-ins. I like to say that you want to make OKRs a living, breathing part of your organ, organization and culture because that's the only way that you're going to get timely and accurate updates. That's the only way you're going to really connect your frontline employees to the mission of the organization, to the objectives at the top, at the top corporate level. And this slide right here is just kind of detailing the fact that check-ins actually go beyond OKRs. So there's a lot of studies, a lot of analysis. We have one here from Gallup. I know that uh, Harvard has done a lot. HBR has done a lot of studies related to just how engaged employees do better work. And especially when you have engaged employees who are aligned with the corporate mission, that, that leads to huge increases in, in top line performance and bottom line performance for the organization. So it, uh, the check-ins where you have managers frequently checking in and, and coaching employees, that's not something that's specific to OKR, but it does amplify the benefits of OKR. It amplifies the benefits of alignment. And in fact, John Doerr in Measurement Matters, he actually devoted the entire second half of the book specifically to check-ins. He calls them CFRs, conversations, feedback, and recognition. And the reason he does that is because when you align your employees and then engage them week to week, month to month, quarter to quarter on, on how they fit into what the organization is trying to accomplish, that engagement acts as like a force multiplier on all the work that they're doing. It acts as a force multiplier to accomplish some of these really incredible goals because it, it allows for a, a level of autonomy and a level of, it creates a, a sense of purpose for employees. And when you have that sense of purpose and that sense of ownership, that's when you can really accomplish amazing things. And of course, if you're aligned, if the employees are aligned to what the organization as a whole is trying to accomplish, well, then those amazing things turn into results and higher performance for the organization overall. So again, John Doerr thinks that you can't just have OKRs, you can't just have alignment that you're tracking and objectives that you're tracking. You really need to have that continuous check-in process going on. You need to have that, that 360 feedback from managers to employees, from cross departments, from within teams. Like It needs to be a living, breathing part of your organization for it to really grab hold and, and drive performance and progress. And Here's where I think that software really has the biggest impact because software does a great job of going to where users are at. We can create workflows that facilitate these behaviors. So we have things in 18, we have things like email notifications, Slack notifications, in-app notifications. We have dedicated workflows around checking in. We built a process around checking in on OKRs that makes it really simple for employees to actually perform the check-in process and, and with very low friction. They don't have to go find a shared spreadsheet in, in, a, in, a, in a folder somewhere on the, on the corporate network. They're going to get a notification right into their email, right into Slack saying, hey, you got a check-in this week. They're going to follow a link in there. It's going to go right to the check-in. Five, 10 minutes later, they're done. They've provided a timely, accurate update on, on the OKRs. They've provided some feedback to manager questions, and then the manager has a, a chance to respond to those. And again, if the manager responds, there's going to be another push notification to the employee, letting them know that their manager has responded to them. So it's a, oh, software provides a single place to centralize all these conversations, all this feedback. It provides a level of focus and dedicated workflows that allow that reduce friction and make it really, really easy for employees to engage in the OKR program itself. And so at this point, I'm going to jump back into the A Team platform to show off another workflow. So 
for this one, and you guys should all be seeing uh, my browser window again. This user story is going to be about the check-in process in A-Team. So again, the way it works in A-Team, and though I uh, a lot of our competitors do something similar here, is when you have a, a weekly check-in, it's going to ping you an email, it's going to send you an email or a Slack notification or maybe an inact notification saying you have some sort of action to take. And it'll in this case, I'm signed in as Joshua. He's the VP of sales. And the reason I'm signed in as Joshua is actually because we could show as a VP of sales, he's both an employee. He reports to the CEO. He does check-ins to, to the CEO. And he's also a manager of the sales department. So we could see both the employee aspect of this and the manager aspect. So Joshua, as an employee, owns objectives for the sales team. And he's going to get this notification, an email maybe. And it says, hey, you have, uh, you have a check-in due on February 3rd. So I think that's what this, this Sunday. And Joshua is going to follow the link in the email, come right here. He could provide comments on, you know, how he's doing on this $30 million in sales. Obviously this one is driven by, this objective is driven by contributions. But then we come down here and he has some objectives where he directly needs to check in on a key result. So he's responsible for helping the reps maintain an active pipeline of 25 ops. So he can check in and say, okay, we've got uh, 23 ops actually right now this week. So check in and obviously the progress is going to update. And if you have that nice alignment created via the planning and alignment process that I showed you earlier, when we drive the progress and the key result, it's going to drive the progress all the way up the alignment chart, all the way up to the top corporate level, which is a really powerful way to take this five minute check in that Josh is doing as an employee and amplify how uh, amplify the power of that in the organization because now everybody in the organization has a chance to be updated no, no matter how the goals are aligning. And of course, we have a section here where there's some free form questions and answers where Jack Smith, as Joshua's manager, can actually kind of drill in and ask certain questions. Uh, internally at 18, we ask questions like, do you have any, do you have any blockers? It's kind of this third question here, or, you know, like what are the OKRs that you're struggling with right now? It's just to get a little bit more feedback going bi-directionally from manager to employee from joshua to his manager jack to make sure that you know not not everything is all about the quantitative updates of the key results some of this feedback some of this progress week to week might not be quantitative but there may be some qualitative things that joshua should be updating jack on so that's the employee perspective of this check-in and again it, it's driven by this push notification it's a really simple process where you spend five minutes, you update a couple key results, you provide some feedback, and then you just submit it. You just hit next in 18. And then from the manager point of view, here's Joshua looking at Fred and Kelly who report to him on the sales team. He can, he's going to get a notification as manager saying, hey, Fred submitted on, uh, on the 27th of January. Fred submitted a check-in. So jump into 18 and check it out. Joshua follows the link. He comes in here, you can see the progress Fred is making on his uh, his individual sales West target here, the $15 million target. And he could, of course, see those those free form questions and answers that, that Fred provided answers on. And, and Josh, if he wants, he could provide these good jobs. He could share it up to his manager, again, providing that recognition that, that helps drive employee engagement. Um, you know, Joshua can uh, provide just like free form answers, like great, great job, Fred, all that kind of stuff leave some personal notes. But again, this is just a, a, a way to, to facilitate the coaching conversation around OKRs. And, and again, like I, like I mentioned earlier in the slides, doing these check-ins, you know, one-on-one -on -one manager employee check-ins, that's something that I would encourage all, all organizations to do, regardless of whether or not they're doing OKRs. But they become really powerful when all of this feedback and all of this check-in and coaching is centralized around the OKRs because that's the way you get engagement that is aligned with what the, the company is trying to accomplish. Again, it's that alignment plus the engagement that really unlocks and drives organizational performance. It unlocks the superpowers and, and helps organizations perform better. So coming back into the slideshow real quick. Again, that was the collaboration and check-in portion. So now we've covered how do you plan, how do you align, how do you set up the initial objectives for the company using software. We've covered how do you collaborate and check-in using software. And then the next step of running a program is, well, you need to track and report 
uh, and create a culture of accountability around OKRs. So, you know, first you plan, then you execute. But while you're executing on your objectives throughout the quarter, you're probably going to have to course correct. You, you're going to want to, you're not going to want to wait to the end of the quarter to figure out that something's off track. Like that's not, that's not going to do you any good trying to meet your objectives if you simply set them on January 1st and then check to see whether or not you hit them on March 31st. You want to have a really powerful reporting tools that help you drill down and figure out exactly where you may be lagging behind. And then as an executive team, as a leadership team, as frontline managers of teams, you want to take action and, and correct that before before it's uh, before you're you reach the end of the quarter and you've failed on your objective. So again, the way that software helps here is that dedicated software can provide a lot of powerful built-in visualizations. You're not going to have to run those pivot tables in Excel. You're not going to have to build a slide deck uh, based on that the spreadsheet data or the documents that you have tracking your OKRs. It's going to have built-in visualizations that tell you exactly where things are exactly what's on track, off track, falling behind, and it'll help you take action. And I think that's one of the, the biggest things here is that software can provide you with really actionable views of data. And this is something that I always talk about with our, with our internal product and design team at A-Team, is that we don't want to overwhelm users with data. There's already so many sources of data that we manage in our day-to-day -day lives, at, at business lives. And OKRs don't need to be another overwhelming source of data. Really what's important is that we provide accurate, timely information that helps you take action. So now I'm going to jump into the, the final user story. And this one's actually my favorite one in the A-Team application because this is one that, that we do internally at A-Team every single week. Um, you know, as a CEO, I run what I call the Monday morning report. It's, it's just a, a weekly check-in every, every Monday on the state of the business how our goals are doing, what's on track, what's off track, and where we need to adjust as a leadership team to make sure that we're going to meet our quarterly goals. So you guys should now be seeing the OKR Explorer within a team. So this is uh, our kind of one-stop shop for all of our reporting, tracking, visualization of OKRs across the company. It's, it's got a really robust querying and filtering system. And while... It, it could show you all kinds of data and you can track all the OKRs across the company. Really what I do every Monday morning is I want to know what's at risk and behind. So I don't want to just know like, okay, are we, are we green on all of our OKRs? I really want to know where I, as a leader, where managers can take action to get us back on track if we're falling behind. So what you'll notice is I just filter, we're looking at the department level view. So we see customer success and marketing and I filter down to just see the at risk and behind goals. And since we're early in the quarter, we only have two that are falling behind right now. Uh, and as an example, one that is falling behind is that marketing team goal that we were that we were looking at at the start of this presentation. This the meet meet lead gen target for Q1 objective. And so you see that uh, it's expected to be at eight percent progress at this point in the quarter, but really it's only at one percent. And so this is perfect. Now, as an executive team, you've called this out in your Monday morning meeting, said. You know, Mary, you're the VP of marketing. Do you have any insight as to as to why this might be behind? Uh, and right there in the meeting, you could drill down and say, okay, well, let's let's look at this. Let's look at the key results and the contributions that are driving the progress, and figure out if if we could determine some sort of cause or, or or reason why this might be falling behind right now. Because it could just be business as usual. It could just be that there hasn't been an opportunity to really drive progress yet, or there could be some action that we should take as a leadership team. So. First of all, we look at uh, this key result around getting 1,500 new leads from the website, and that's obviously behind. So as a CEO, as, as Jack Smith, CEO of Acme Corporation here, I might have some questions for Mary around how she's going to hit the 1,500 target for the quarter and whether you know that's something that we should be really concerned about. Maybe we need a new ad campaign or something. But then I also noticed that there's a, a contribution here coming from Paula around improving SEO, and that one's also falling behind. So maybe as a next step here, I, I drill down into, into Paula's profile and we say, you know, is, is Paula being overwhelmed? I mean, one of the superpowers for OKRs is, is that they should help you focus and commit to priorities. And as I'm looking at what Paula's working on here, one of the first things I would notice is that, wow, she has a lot of key results that she's tracking. She's got three separate objective objectives, like maybe 15 key results here. It seems like at her level, 
she doesn't have really any focus around what she's trying to accomplish. And so as a leadership team, we could talk about, well, how do we help refocus Paula? Maybe there's an opportunity to remove some of these objectives. You know, as we see here, it looks like two of these are actually dupl duplicate objectives in this, in this dummy data set that we have in the demo environment. So obviously uh, the first thing might just be to get rid of the, these duplicates because they're obviously not helping with focus. But again, the, the great thing here is that it, it's really easy for us to drill down and pinpoint problems and then use that to take action. So we don't have to wait to the end of the quarter to figure out, oh, we didn't meet our lead gen target. We can do that check-in on January 29th and not wait until March 31st. And we still have an opportunity here to get back on track with our objectives as a team. And not only that, but we can also, we kind of did a drill down there to see like, okay, why is this objective falling behind? We drilled down all the way down into Paula Finley. What if we want to kind of look from the bottom up and understand, well, if we are falling behind on this, how is this impacting the rest of the business? So here I'm going to click on this little alignment icon and it takes us back into the alignment chart that we were looking at before. Again, you can see that alignment and what we notice right away is that we see every level of impact when this improve SEO objective is falling behind. So we understand how a single team, a single manager falling behind on their objectives can have ripple effects throughout the organization. And again, it's this transparency is really important to OKRs because this it's not about calling people out. It's about helping to coach them, helping to focus them, helping to provide the resources or uh, the change in strategy necessary in order to meet the objectives. You know, OKRs are very much in the spirit of you know the agile methodology of iterating and improving over time. And it by having these built-in reporting tools within OKR software itself, it makes it a lot easier to be able to identify, take action, course correct well ahead of time and to get these top corporate objectives back on track, which again, it go, just goes back to that alignment and driving progress and improvement for the organization itself. So I'll jump back into the slideshow here for the final time. Um, looks like we had one other question. Um, a little bit more of a technical question. Again, I'll, I'll save that for the end. Some of the technical ones, I think they can derail us a little bit by getting too much into the weeds. So we'll save those to the end. Um, but again, getting back into the slideshow here, uh, we talked about planning alignment. We talked about collaboration check-in, tracking and reporting. And that last thing I was mentioning, improving over time about how objectives are meant to be there, it's not a perfect process. You're not going to start OKRs the first quarter and just knock it out of the park, achieve all your moonshots. You really have to have this attitude that it's a learning process and that ultimately you're going to improve as an organization over time and get better at objectives. And because of the alignment and engagement, it's going to improve your organization as, as you build the culture around OKRs. So the first thing to call out here, and I mentioned this a little bit at the beginning, is that Software can't force this upon you. There's got to be a, a level of OKR management buy-in, and it's going to take practice. It's going to take it's going to take one quarter, two quarters, maybe as you roll this out to multiple tiers within your organization, depending on how large your company is. It's going to take that practice, and it's going to take real effort to get your OKRs right. And you know, a lot in John Doerr's book, he talked a lot about this. Even at Google, they struggle with it, and they really had to have buy-in all the way from Larry Page at the CEO level. He had, to, he had to be bought into OKRs. He had to be taking OKRs as seriously as he was asking his managers to take them. So, you know, that, that management buy-in, that leadership around OKRs as, a, as, as a, a cultural underpinning of your organization that has to be there. But software can still help. So, for instance, we have all of your, all of your data tracked over time within a team, and you can compare Q1 2019 to Q4 2018, all the way back to Q1 2018. And you can see how your team has improved over time. You can see how you've gotten better at writing objectives, at making very quantitative uh, key results that follow you know, the smart goal principles being like time bound and you know, like realistic and things like that. And 
And so you can learn using that historical data. You can look back, hold retrospectives, understand where you came up short in previous quarters and use that to be better in future quarters. And, and then the other thing, which is kind of, it's not really so much about the software itself, but really about being a software company. A team as a provider of OKR software, we, we've seen OKR implementations across a ton of different customers, a ton of different industries, different use cases, different levels of familiarity or comfort with OKRs. And so we have a lot of practical real world experience rolling OKRs out. And so one of the, one of the big things that's kind of uh, easy to miss with, with an OKR software platform like A-Team is that we actually have a dedicated customer success department that provides support and can provide some level of OKR consultation and coaching that can help our customers roll out OKRs. You know, we looked at that poll at the beginning that we have a, on this call, we have a lot of different levels of OKR experience and familiarity. And our customer success department at A-Team knows how to work with those different levels of experience and expertise. And, and we provide our own uh, best practices based on real world implementations of the OKR methodology. So let me, let me flip back real quick to all the way back to the beginning because we're coming to the end here. We'll get to questions, but before we do, I just want to quickly recap what we covered today. Um, again, we, the whole motivation for this was to map John Doerr's OKR superpowers to how software helps unlock those in practice at scale. So again, how, do you, how does software unlock focus, alignment, tracking, and stretching for amazing? And we went over these life, this OKR life cycle within the 18 product of, you know, you start by planning and aligning your objectives across the company. You then move on to weekly check-ins and collaboration on those OKRs. You, of course, will have these, this tracking, reporting, and course correction happening at the management and top leadership level. And then at the end of the quarter, you have a chance to look back over your data for the quarter, hold a little retrospective, and find ways to iterate and improve on your OKR process. And it, this is a, an OKR lifecycle repeats quarterly for most companies. And you know, like I mentioned towards the end there, it, don't expect to be perfect in, in the first quarter you try this out. It really is a learning process, and it's really meant to, uh, to to help. It's really meant to help focus and align, like the first two superpowers. There, it's a it focus and alignment that takes time, and it's going to take a lot of practice to get everything aligned appropriately, and to really whittle your OKRs down to just the the essential ones that you need in order to execute more effectively as a company. So, with that. You know, thank you guys for attending this webinar, and I'm now going to open up to, to questions. So it looks like we have maybe 15 minutes here, 20 minutes to go over whatever questions you guys have. And I know there's a lot that were coming in as I was doing the presentation, uh, and so I'll start going down that list. But as a reminder, if you guys want this presentation or you want any more information on OKRs or A-Team specifically, you know, feel free to email us at hello at ateam.com. So let's uh, let's go through these questions now. Um, first question here is: Is it recommended that OKRs are set in strictly annual or quarterly, or quarterly breakdowns, or can the top corporate level objectives be three to five years out? Uh, you'll get a lot of different opinions on that one. Personally, I think that setting them three to five years out is going to be very very difficult, especially if you don't already have a lot of practice as an organization at setting OKRs, you know, just even like wordsmithing the objective correctly or setting very measurable key results. That's going to be really, really hard to do at a three to five year time horizon. And even beyond that, OKRs, I kind of mentioned this during the presentation, they're meant to be kind of in line with agile methodologies about you know, using them as a learning tool where you iterate and improve over time. And so if you're setting these three to five year objectives, those really feel more like your company's mission statement or vision statement or maybe strategic pillars. So I think that for, you know, leave those as a mission statement for three to five years out or a vision statement and OKRs really should be something that you iterate on quarterly. Okay, here's a uh, bit of a technical question. Can a team be linked to several top-level objectives? 
So I think this is going back to the, the alignment chart. I'll jump back into 18 real quick. The alignment chart that we're looking at. Uh, and the question is, can a team be linked to several objectives? And the answer is yes. So as, as an example of what I showed here, the marketing department is in this case linked. There's one objective that is linked here to the 30 million in sales target. But if we jump back to this level right here, the second tier, we'll see that the marketing department has a second goal, a second objective, help the sales team at the revenue target that is directly linked to, to grow the business. So there's teams could have multiple objectives and each one of those objectives can be aligned in a different way. And again, some of that alignment is going to be the top corporate level. Some of it might be cross-functional alignment. Some of it for your frontline managers might be aligned to department level objectives. A lot of different ways you could do that alignment. And it really just comes down to some practice and experience. And again, you know, like our customer success department helps out companies every day. Uh, our, our customers have questions about how to best do that alignment. And that's, that's why we have dedicated customer success. Okay, we got another one here. Um, can you customize the weights of the sub objectives uh, progress contributing to the upper level objective progress? Uh, yeah, you can. So actually in A-Team you can, as I mentioned here, uh, again, looking at this, the, the alignment chart that we're seeing right now, this 12.6% is really just the average, uh, I'm sorry about that, is really just the average of the progress of the contributions below it. Um, you can in a team customize the weighting of each one of those contributions. Although that's, I would definitely put that in the, in the bucket of like advanced user features that, that we, you know, if you're getting into to this like weighting of objectives and sub objectives or weighting of key results, that's really advanced functionality. And we recommend that you have a very strong grasp of OKRs before you try to get that, that, um, that tricky with it. Uh, one thing that we do see a lot of though, and that we think actually works well is just putting a 0% contribution weight because not everything needs to be like, per, I, I mentioned that term algorithmic alignment where the progress down here drives the progress up top. You don't want that at all times. Sometimes you just want a visual alignment. Sometimes you just want to see things connected without having it actually change the progress of the parent objective. So that's fine too. I'm looking through for some uh, other questions here. Um, can you customize the frequency of check-ins? So this is going back to that collaboration and check-in, um, the, the pulse check-ins that I was showing earlier. And the answer is yes, you can. You can choose. That's like one of the configuration options that admins and managers have is to customize the, the frequency of, of our pulse check-ins every week. That's really important because not every company is going to want to do weekly check-ins. That's, that's asking a lot at some companies. They just don't have that culture around wanting to look at OKRs every single week. And that's fine. I would say that, you know, try to at least have it bi-weekly. If you start getting into like the monthly check-in, then you're running the risk that you won't really have accurate information when you're looking at like the Explorer, the OKR Explorer to try to find what's at risk or behind. So bi-weekly check-ins probably make a lot of sense for some companies. And the other thing too is this goes beyond just like setting the check-ins. Uh, one thing you want to do after you set check-ins is make sure that people are actually doing the check-ins. Um, and that's one way that you could figure out what cadence works for your company is by figuring out how often are, are your employees actually checking in. So here on the screen, you can see I went to this engagement report that we have in the product. And this is a way for admins and managers to figure out just how often employees are using it. How often are they doing their check-ins? Are they doing them on time? And are managers reviewing them? Um, because of course, if teams aren't doing check-ins or managers aren't reviewing them, then it's going to be really hard to build the OKR habit. And so you, as admins, as OKR program leads, as executives, you'd want to help coach those managers, coach those teams around why these check-ins are important, why the OKR program is crucial to your, to your company achieving what it wants to achieve. So we have this, this uh, engagement report here where you can see, you know, week over week, how many people are checking in on time, how many people are checking in late, we're looking at like the sales department for Joshua's team here. You know, how often is Joshua reviewing everybody's check-in? So it looks like for the past two weeks, his team has checked in on time, but Joshua hasn't reviewed him yet. 
Um, so this is an opportunity maybe as a CEO to just remind Joshua, hey, make sure you're reviewing those check-ins and providing some feedback and coaching to your employees. Okay, um, another question here. Uh, how do OK, this, this one's a great question. Uh, I like this one a lot. How do OKRs work with or overlap with tactical tools like engineering bugs, feature tracking, or task management tools? This is great. I, uh, I'm actually, I, I come from an engineering background, so I'm very familiar with things like JIRA, um, you know, task tracking, bug tracking, ticket tracking. Uh, that's a very crucial part of like product and engineering's day-to-day -day workflows. And the answer there is that you do definitely want to separate those. So OKRs are not task management. Your key results should not look like a task list. If they do, uh, it's again, you run the risk of losing focus on what those big meaningful objectives are. Because if you just have a task list of everything that you do, how do you know what's most important? How do you focus? So there's definitely a separation there. And the way I like to think of it is, you know, it, it is, there's kind of two, two major buckets of key results. You have your milestone type key results, which could be like the release of a big project, a big product feature. Um, or a big marketing email or marketing campaign or something. That's a big project that has a milestone that has, you know, maybe a due date or something like that. So that could be a key result. And of course, over the course of a month or a quarter, you may be tracking a lot of different tasks that go into releasing that big feature. And, and so the tasks are, are meant to be managed in Jira or in Asana or whatever task tracking tool you have. And the weekly check-ins are just where you can, you can, uh, as an employee or as a manager who's in charge of that project, update your company on, on the status of that. So it doesn't need to be completely tied into every single task you complete. At the OKR level, you just really want to, you just care whether it's on track or off track, falling behind, things like that. It doesn't need to be super granular. granular. And uh, so that's like the milestone type key results. There's another type of key result, which is the metrics, which is things like, you know, Im Im improve website retention by 20% or improve use of feature X by 10%. And, and so those are normally, I actually like those the best because those speak directly to customer outcomes or to outcomes for your business. And so whenever possible, I actually recommend that companies use, like on the product and the engineering side, use outcome-based key results that measure some sort of customer outcome or customer behavior. And so the task tracking tool, of course, you're using that day-to-day. -day, but the OKRs are really focused on these big, meaningful outcomes for your business and for your customers. Um, this is kind of a follow-up question there. It's like, what kind of data sources can be linked to the OKRs in terms of like updating progress, or is it only manual input? So, you know, I was just mentioning that like the, the task tracking tools like Jira or Asana should be separate. We do have actually an A team um, two integrations we do that we've just found have been the most popular and the, the kind of lowest overhead for people to maintain. Uh, we have a Jira integration and a Salesforce integration. So you can actually drive. So here I'm, I could add a key result to this, to this objective. So we have this increased customer retention, 95% objective. Uh, I could add it like a, for instance, the Salesforce key result to that. Uh, and you can write, uh, in, in this case, in the demo environment, we don't actually have the integration configured, but you could write a Salesforce query that can pull data directly from your Salesforce integration that will automatically drive the progress of this key result. So we do provide Jira and Salesforce integrations, uh, and they can be useful. For instance, we use the Jira integration internally within ATM for some of our engineering goals around quality. So we look at you know, bug count in Jira as an indicator of, of quality of our application. Um, but of course, it's not like the end all be all. It's not the single key result we have that measures quality. It's just one aspect of the quality objective that we have. So there's definitely some like data input sources that we have. But again, like I was mentioning, it, we think it's really important that you don't get lost in the weeds of task management. OKRs are not task management. They're not task tracking. They're meant to be weekly check-ins on these big, meaningful objectives. Okay, let's see. Um, looking for some other unique questions here. 
So there's a question here. This is this is one we actually get a lot from from customers. Is you know how do you can you implement OKRs in a single department or business unit if the overall company is not implementing OKRs? There's uh, so yes, you can do it, but there are definitely risks to it. Having executive leadership buy-in is really really important for OKRs, and the reason for that is because if you don't have a, a clear strategy and clear top corporate objectives, then it's really hard for an individual department or business unit within a company to make sure that they're kind of creating the right business outcomes that align with what the executives are expecting. So it really comes down to expectations. And so if you have like a department or business unit that has very concrete department level objectives that the executive team has has kind of approved and signed off on, In that case, then yes, I think absolutely a single department or a single business unit can run an OKR program by themselves without involving the rest of the company. We have customers who do that. But you really need to make sure that that the leadership of the business unit or the department has very clear objectives and that there is at least some sort of buy-in from the executive leadership team that this one particular department will be using the OKR methodology and will be setting objectives because otherwise you might get into this, this, oh, it's misalignment. It's really what it comes down to where you have individual teams who are trying to accomplish the department level objectives, but maybe the CEO is expecting different things to be accomplished. And that's, that's a recipe for misalignment in your organization. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, so question here, I was under the impression that objectives, not just key results, needed to be measurable as well. In the examples that I gave during the presentation, objectives are mostly qualitative. Can I comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. So the objectives are are really meant to be qualitative and the key results are the quantitative aspects. So key results, there should always be a number, something you can measure in the key result, but the objectives should be more of a, a statement about where you want to go. The, the way I like to, you know, there's a lot of different ways to describe this, but um, the way I like to describe it is that objectives tell you where you're going and key results tell you whether or not you got there. Um, so again, key results aren't meant to be tasks. They're not things you do to get there. They are things that you look at to measure whether or not you, you reach the objective. And and so there's a little bit of them that is slightly retrospective in the sense that, you know, like in the previous previous example I gave of a milestone key result where it's a project you want to release, a feature you want to release. Obviously, uh, if that's a key result on an objective, you know, maybe improve the business and then in order to do that, your key result is release feature X by February 15th. Uh, obviously, you're going to, that that key result is kind of a binary thing. Did you release it or did you not? Um, and so it's going to tell you whether or not you reach that objective based on whether or not you accomplish that key result. Now, of course, you can track progress over time, and, and that's what the check-ins are for, is for your team to provide estimates and, and confidence levels of like, yeah, we've, we finished 50% of the task, so I feel like we're actually 50% of the way there. Uh, and that's what the check-ins are meant to do, where you're updating progress towards a key result as a way to proactively um, well, first of all, keep that objective in mind, but second of all, uh, provide a way to course correct if for some reason you're falling behind on some of the tasks that we, you were doing. But yes, the objective should be qualitative. It's where you're going. The key results should be quantitative, whether or not you've gotten there. Okay. Um, looks like we're coming to the end here. I know that we hit the, uh, the two o'clock uh, in time for this webinar, but I'm going to go through the remaining questions here, but feel free to drop off guys. And again, thank you for attending the webinar. And if you have any follow-up questions, go ahead and email us at hello at ATM.com and we'd be happy to connect and answer any of your questions about OKRs or, or the ATM platform itself. So I'm going to continue maybe for another five, 10 minutes here, just answering these last questions, but feel free to drop off. Thanks guys. Okay. Um, question here. Uh, I'm in the enterprise software solution space, software as a service. How can I use OKRs to identify and address customer problems? Uh, that's going to be a, a very broad question. So first of all, I don't know that I can provide a concrete answer. That question is going to depend on your business. I think the important thing there is to focus on 
um, looking at your mission statement as a company. So you say you're in the enterprise software sh- solution space. So like, what are you trying to accomplish? What, are you, what value are you trying to provide your customers? And then take that value into quarter size or annual um, chunks, things you can accomplish within the quarter and, and come up with the, the first step of the planning process is, is what do you want? To, what sort of stuff, customer outcomes do you want to create or customer problems do you want to solve within the span of one quarter? And so, you know, take those customer problems and, and formulate them as objectives and then go the step deeper to find ways that you could quantify whether or not you've accomplished that objective. So, it, you know, that's the toughest part of OKRs really is to take, uh, take your strategy, turn that into objectives that you can actually reach within a single quarter, and then take that a step further and quantify whether or not you reached it. That definitely is a tricky thing. Um, and again, this is where I refer you back to that fact that, uh, you know, we can't, software is not going to force you to write perfect OKRs. We can provide you a lot of guidelines, a lot of support. Customer success is going to be a great asset for you in terms of, you know, providing you f- with advice based on some of the other customers and accounts we've worked with. But at the end of the day, it, it is going to require that leadership buy-in and that, uh, that, that attitude that, OKRs are a constant improvement process and it's a cultural shift and you need the leadership buy-in and you need to just give it a try and be ready and willing to improve over time. Okay. Um, Here's another one. Should the support function uh, also have OKR? So by support function, this they're referring to employees who have like recurring tasks uh, maybe less project oriented. Maybe they just do the same thing over and over. Like, uh, I don't know, like answer support tickets or uh, you know, maybe like accounts payable department where you're just like, you know, doing spreadsheets and things like that. So should they have uh, OKRs as well? Um, again, it's going to depend on your company. My recommendation in general would be to start with no, try to find an objective that maybe the finance department couldn't be responsible for or an objective that the customer support or customer success department can be responsible for. OKR should not be tasks. They should be objectives. They should be bigger things that you're trying to accomplish. And I, and I often recommend customers always start with team-based OKRs. You could do individual OKRs. They're just a lot tougher to do because they tend to backslide into task management. And that gets into micromanagement, that gets into a lot of like overhead of like now you're checking in on every week on the stuff you did every single day. It feels like you're being micromanaged. It gets really frustrating. It's a high friction process. It tends to erode that engagement that OKRs are meant to create. So I would definitely say avoid task management at all costs within OKRs and focus on the team-based objectives, department-based objectives and how individuals can contribute to those. And to be honest, not every not every member of a team is going to own an OKR. They're not even going to own a, a not everybody's going to own a key result. So, for instance, internally within a team in our product and engineering team, we certainly don't have engineers who all have OKRs. In fact, not every engineer at a team has key results either. Normally, we try to do it at like the scrum team level where the actual, you know, team that's producing features itself will be responsible for some sort of either key result or objective. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. It looks like we only have a couple of questions here. Um, I already answered that one. Yeah, so the final question here is around OKR grading and how is it different from key result metrics? So that's... Um, Probably a much bigger conversation overall. Um, different companies definitely do OKR grading differently. And the way we do it at A Team is that we try to be a management tool that helps you, as I went through in the presentation, track, report, diagnose problems, and course correct. So we don't want to just be retrospective. Oftentimes, OKR grading turns into a purely retrospective product uh, project where at the end of a quarter, you just say, uh, I achieved this 70% of the way, or I got a B on this, on this objective. That's, that's great. That's important. That's part of the constant improvement process. 
but we want to take it a step further at 18. We think it's really important that you can course correct in the middle of a quarter uh, and get back on track if you need to. So the KR metrics that we have with the weekly check-ins, we, we are encouraging our users via those weekly check-ins to provide, and even if they haven't finished the project yet, to provide an estimate of where they're at. Are they 50% of the way done? Are they 20% of the way done? It's not meant to be like perfect science. It's meant to be a prediction or a confidence level of whether or not you will reach that, accomplish that key result by the end of the time period. And and then of course, at the end of the time period, you could still do the, the grading of, of the objective itself, of the OKR itself. And so we have that functionality within 18 where when you close an objective, you can assign a score to it. And you know different companies do the scoring different ways. Companies like Google are much more comfortable with a lot of really moonshot stretch objectives where they'll, they'll just kind of say like, hey, it's totally fine if you only complete 60 to 70% of, of the objectives that you, you had for the quarter because even doing 60 to 70% of them is amazing. It's, it's doing revolutionary things. Uh, but then other companies have a lot more committed, committed OKRs where they have a specific outcome they need to create specific project they need to complete or a specific you know revenue target and in that case it's it's really unacceptable to have 67 percent done because then you didn't accomplish what you needed to so okay that's uh that's all the questions that i see in here so again if you if there's anything that i missed anything you guys want to cover you guys want to review the presentation feel free to email us at hello at 18.com so thank you thank you again everybody have a great day